David Doucette. I'm a systems engineer here at Polycom. And today what I want to talk to you about is uh, resetting the video board epoxy or the VVP uh, to factory defaults. And to do that I'm going to show you um, how to do it on two different devices here. Um, I have the VVP. This is an old one. This is the 4300T. But basically any one of the 4300 series is basically about the same form factor. Um, so we'll go uh, over how to reset this to factory defaults. And it is a little bit different um, on the 5300 and the 6400. So I've got here a 5300 and we're going to go through how to reset this to factory defaults as well. And in both cases, the assumption is that you have a VVP and you're not sure how it's configured right now. It might have been um, at a location as part of a demonstration unit or out for loan and it's come back and you're not sure how to get this back to factory default so you can then reuse it. So that's what we'll do today. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is the 4300 and um, as you can see it's, it's unplugged. So what we need to do first is give this guy power. So again, the assumption is that I don't know how to get into this box, right? Um, someone's uh, got a password on there that uh, they forgot or, or that person uh, didn't write it down or what have you. Anyway, so I'm plugging it in now and it'll be booting up here. So it's starting its process. Once this thing's booted up, it'll only take just a moment here. Um, the next thing you're gonna need to do is get yourself a very sophisticated tool, a paper clip. And uh, on the back of the 4300, you'll see here, so I'm bring this all the way over. There we go. There we go. What you see here is there's a little uh, hole right next to where the uh, power supply comes in. And uh, that hole says reset. And so, there. Now my status is, uh, if you can see here, it just popped up green and green. So the status means that the system is booted up. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to depress the, um, uh, the reset button on the other side of this hole here, three times in quick succession. And what will happen is the system will automatically reboot and will be in a uh, factory default state. So, one, oops, let's try that again. <laughs> one, two, three. All right, so now what I see here is that uh, all three lights here for the, were lit up. Now it's back to power, so it's rebooting now. And uh, within a minute, I guess, uh, we should see the status light pop up. And uh, once that's done, this thing is at a factory reset state. Um, this is a this particular VBP is one I use often. I even put here um, the instructions on on how to reset it to factory defaults, uh, so I don't forget. But another good thing to remember is that uh, before you do any of this, you should have your license key for the VBP available, uh, handy. Um, in my case, what I've done is I've printed it out on a big old label here and I've, I've put it at the bottom. And so that'll enable this, uh, my VBP license it properly. Okay, so now my status is back up. I'm at the default value. That means my uh, IP address on this is 192.168.1.1. So pretty straightforward and that is done. Factory reset. Okay, now that we've got that done, let's take a look at how we can factory reset the uh, 5300 series. Now, this one can't use the paper clip. Okay, so for this one, what we're going to need to do, and again, with the assumption that I can't even get to the web GUI, maybe I don't even know what the IP address is, so we're going to do this by console. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, console cable here, this is a USB to serial cable, and now I've got a, um, an extension to that to give me the right interface I need. So basically it's just a, a standard DB9 type interface here. So I'm going to plug this into my console. Okay. And the 
the next thing I need to do is give this guy some power. And now he's booting up. And I have started up my uh, software to um, connect to it. In this case, I'm using PuTTY. You can use HyperTerminal or anything else for that matter that, that will address the serial or COM port on your computer. Um, these are the parameters here that you'll need to s establish with your software. Um, the COM port number is going to be dependent on your particular system. And so, anyway, this is it for my for my setup, uh, and I'm going to now open up that connection. And if I hit enter, I get prompted for the login. This particular VBP, as you can see, I've named it VBP hyphen B as in Bravo. So I'm going to log in as root. And if you do not have the password, then you can uh, get the password from Polycom support if you require it. Um, okay, so now that I'm in, and again, I need to reset this box to factory configuration, I'm just going to run the following command. Um, slash Etsy, slash conf, slash bin, slash CFG, um, underscore restore. And there it is. The system is going down now, sending SIG term to all processes, terminated. All right, so now it is um, actually rebooting, and you can see that going on right there. And I think you can see right here as well on the um, monitor that I've got hooked up here. Um, to the front panel. It's also doing performing the memory test identical to what you're seeing on the screen here. I should be editing this in so you can see on both um, that the memory test is actually occurring on both simultaneously here. Gives you an idea of what's happening on the system. We can hit escape to skip the memory test. I'm just going to let it go. I think it's to 7, what is that, it's like 7 megs? No, that can't be right. 7 gigabytes? 700 megs? <laughs> 4, 5, excuse me. There we go. 5.2. Boom, boom. There it is. Detecting IDE drives. And I'm seeing this on both again. Um, bang. All right. Scanning IDE drives. I'm getting that. No drive attached. Boom, boom. Looks like the BIOS is starting up there. There it is. Now I'm not seeing it any longer on my uh, terminal here, but what I'm seeing on the screen, uh, again attached to the front panel of the uh, VBP, it showed the process and now it says OK booting the kernel. Right? And um, I can see a little bit of light activity on the VBP's uh, front panel. And that pretty much looks OK. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close my PuTTY connection, that serial connection, and to verify if it's actually started up, um, I'm going to go back into the VBP. And yes, now. You can see here the login says V2IU login as opposed to VBP hyphen B like I had before. So this has now been factory restored. And we are done.